bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid, no, no, no. I am not dismayed, not me, for I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory. For the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid, no, no, no. I am not dismayed, not me. For I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory. For the Lord your God is with you. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our service this morning on such a beautiful day. Good morning. Around this time, many churches focus on the work of Christian aid, particularly because Christian aid work week falls in May. Today, in our worship, we will be thinking about the word of Christian aid. We will be giving thanks firstly for God's provision for us in creation, though we will remember also how we, as a human race, have sometimes misused creation. This has contributed to climate change, which disproportionately affects the poor and the weak in places like Kenya. We will also be thinking of Christian Aid's focus this year on mitigating the effect of climate change in Kenya and elsewhere. As we do, we will be listening to the voices of the scripture, of creation, and of the young and the not so young as we think about the problems and about what we can do to help. This service today is being led by the elders, members of the Kirk Session. It will be happening in most of the churches in Dunn's Presbytery. I'd like to, this morning before we start, particularly thank those who recorded, the elders who recorded parts of the service, so Karen and Alan Aitchison, Brian Longwood and Brian Tate. The service draws on material produced by Christian Aid. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvellous works among all the people. Now our first hymn this morning is All Things Bright and Beautiful, which we all play for us. I think this is actually one of my favourite ones and it reminds me of school and church assemblies and school assemblies.
come and celebrate our common home. We gather with the family of humanity. With the mountains, islands and deserts. We honour the glory of God in creation. With the lakes, rivers and seas. We come to the source of living water. With the land, its soil, seeds and sustenance. We give thanks for God's generous provision. With the forests of great trees, the lungs of the planet. We will sing with joy and clap our hands. We join with the whole of creation, inspired by those who have gone before and the prophetic voices of today. We dare to praise and pray for another possible world. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Listen to the word of God. The first reading today is from the Old Testament, Psalm 96, verses 11 to 13. God, the Supreme King. Be glad, earth and sky, roar, sea, and every creature in you. Be glad, fields and everything in you. The trees and the woods will shout for joy when the Lord comes to rule the earth. He will rule the peoples of the world with justice and fairness. In this psalm, the psalm writer reminds us that we humans are responsible to God. We will be judged by God and by those who come after us for the way in which we have cared for or abused the earth. There are many different pressures on the earth, including population growth, pollution of our oceans and the clearing of vast rainforests for agriculture. But most scientists agree that a pressing issue is the way in which our lifestyle is gradually contributing to changing climate patterns, leading sometimes to prolonged dry spells and sometimes to flooding, which disproportionately impact some parts and peoples of the world. Here are some words spoken by Glory a young person living at the sharp end of climate change in the Philippines. Glory is pictured here with her younger sister. I am 19-year-old Glory from the Philippines. I live on the small island of Tobogan Cars with my family. It's beautiful and peaceful, with fresh air, coral reefs and fresh seafood. But it is changing. Living on an island is very challenging. I really feel the impact of climate change. My message to the world is that we must act on this crisis of climate change. We need to be responsible. We should be concerned about protecting our surroundings because this has been created for us. We have the wisdom to know what is right and what is wrong. Let's listen now to the words of Severin Collis Suzuki, spoken nearly 30 years ago in 1992 at the UN Earth Summit. These words are similar to those that we've heard more recently. Will people still be saying these same things in 20 years' time? Hello, I'm Severin Suzuki speaking for ECHO, the Environmental Children's Organization. We're a group of 12 and 13 year olds trying to make a difference. Vanessa Setti, Morgan Geisler, Michelle Quigg, and me. We've raised all the money to come here ourselves, to come 5,000 miles to tell you adults you must change your ways. Coming up here today, I have no hidden agenda. I am fighting for my future. Losing my future is not like losing an election or a few points on the stock market. I am here to speak for all generations to come. I am here to spe speak on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go unheard. I am here to speak for the countless animals dying across this planet because they have nowhere left to go. I am afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in our ozone. I am afraid to breathe the air because I don't know what chemicals are in it. I used, to go in, I used to go fishing in Vancouver, my home, with my dad, 
until just a few years ago, we found the fish full of cancers. And now we hear of animals and plants going extinct every day, vanishing forever. In my life, I have dreamt of seeing the great herds of wild animals, jungles and rainforests full of birds and butterflies. But now I wonder if they will even exist for my children to see. Did you have to worry of these things when you were my age? All this is happening before our eyes, and yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions. I'm only a child, and I don't have all the solutions. But I, don't, I want you to realize, neither do you. For the beauty of the earth, desecrated by pollution, extinguished by forest fires, choked by plastic waste, Christ our God, forgive us. For the urgency of this hour, ignored by apathy or procrastination, wasted by ineffective decisions, denied by economic interests, Christ our God, forgive us. For the joy of human love, fractured by forced migration, crushed by bereavement, lost to typhoons, floods, starvation, Christ our God, bringer of justice, forgive us. Amen. Sometimes, because we are relatively unaffected by climate change, we can forget that this is not merely a debating point, that it is now, that it's happening now today. Having a detrimental effect on the lives of millions of people in the UK and in other parts of the world. This year, Christian
Shamir is highlighting the way in which changing climate patterns lead to drought in Kenya, with knock-on effects on people's lives. Although Christian Aid works across 29 countries, each year the focus is put on one specific country and one story, which brings the issues home and makes it real. This year, the focus is on Kenya and a climate crisis that is frighteningly familiar in different parts of the world as well. So let's meet Rose, who is caught in a cycle of climate chaos from severe drought and then to flooding. This extreme weather robs her of what she and her family need just to survive, a reliable source of water. Without water, every day is a struggle. Without water, Rose is hungry, thirsty, and tired. She is uncertain as to what the next day will bring and what kind of future her grandchildren will have. This is her climate crisis. When she was a child, Rose remembers how often the rains would fall, giving fruit to the baobab trees and providing plenty of nutritious food to eat. Rose says, when I was a young girl, there was plenty of food. Now, because of climate change, the rains are totally unreliable. I worry a lot about food. I pray to God that the rainfall will become normal, like it used to be. Rose strives to provide for her grandchildren who live with her. She does all she can to give them happy childhoods, like the time she remembers, then there was plenty of food. But the climate crisis is driving her to the brink. In times of drought, Rose sets out on a long and dangerous journey every morning to collect water for her family. She walks on an empty stomach. Rose says, because I am old, I can't walk very fast. When I get home, I just rest in the evening. I have no energy to do anything else. Christian Aid is working with communities like those of Roses to bring practical solutions. Earth dams are built to collect water when the rains do come, so there is a supply to protect people during the drought, and they don't have to travel miles to find water. There is also investment in long-term solutions like renewable energy and campaigning for global policies that will keep global warming down. I have a voice, you have a voice, we have a voice, and when we sing together, a line is drawn, and hope we born. This is the song, the song of kingdom come. I have a voice, you have a voice, we have a voice, when we sing together, a line is drawn, and hope reborn, this is the song, the song of kingdom come, we heard the cries of distant neighbours, to dispossess refugee and God's command to feed the hungry and set them free and set them free we heard the word the new commandment and we reclaimed the prophet's call to love the world Until their poverty 
second reading today is from the New Testament, John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. Jesus the real vine. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I love you. The greatest love a person can have for his friends is to give his life for them. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because servants do not know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. And so the father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. This, then, is what I command you, love one another. One of the difficulties when it comes to climate change is to know the power to help. How can we practically express the love that Jesus talks about? We can all do our small bit to encourage our politicians to address the issues. We can recycle where we can, and avoid polluting the earth and look at ways in which we can save energy. We can also support the work of Christian aid. I'm now going to hand over to Rita who's going to tell us how we all can do that this year. This year is normal. We will have Christian aid envelopes available in the church on Sunday the 9th of May. And you can use these if you wish to make a donation and return it to the church the following Sunday. We are also doing something a little different. We're doing a sponsored step count. Make every step count. We are going to take count every step that we take and the aim is to walk the 6,364 miles from Berwick to Katui in Kenya. A grand total 
of 12,728,000 steps. Now the route we're taking is shown virtually on the map and I don't know if you can just see there's a darker line. You can join us in doing this by either sponsoring those walking or by walking along with us. Now don't worry if you can't manage long walks and you don't have to do special walks just to record a total, but just record your daily total steps as you go about your day. You will be surprised at just how many steps you do each day. A morning doing housework, and we're not talking spring clean, but a weekly house, 2,000 steps. A trip around the supermarket, 800 steps. Up and down the stairs, retrieving the item you'd forgotten once again, 60 steps. Every little helps and adds up and takes us closer to our destination. And after being locked away over the last year, it's a little encouragement to do a little bit more and get a bit more active again. Now, Rina, Karen and I have already started over the last week, and to date we have walked 137 miles, or 135,069 steps. So, we have now reached Weatherby in West Yorkshire. <laughs> so, if you want to walk along with us, then please speak to me and I'll sign you up. And I do have information packs, the front and both sides, for you to take away with a bit of information and a sponsorship form. And if you don't want to walk, then please sponsor us. And just remember, as you walk the dozen steps to the tap to make a cuppa or wash your hands, that those we are trying to help have to walk many miles a day just to do the same thing. So let's make every step count. God who speaks through unexpected people, we thank you for contemporary prophets who are challenging us to act on climate change. For indigenous people and their invaluable knowledge of the land and sea where they live. For scientists working on innovative solutions to our problems. For young people and their heartfelt concerns. For business people and financiers who are looking beyond the old assumptions. We pray that you will help those in power to hear their prophetic voices. Help them to see beyond short-term political priorities and business plans and give them wisdom and courage when they face difficult decisions. Lord, hear our prayer. God of second chances, we recognise the damage that humankind through its entire history has done to the earth. Much of this was done in ignorance some was done because of lack of thought. Some is a reflection of selfishness. We pray that ways may be found for humankind to live more lightly on the earth and that those who are suffering most from climate change may be the centre of international attention and help and bless the work of Christian aid. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.
May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us and all creation, this day and for the future to come. Amen. Amen.